Okay, so in the last video, we learned how to create a rope styled brush all in Adobe Illustrator. This video is part two, and I'm gonna be showing you how we can take that brush and apply it to some text, some lettering, all in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be, of course, to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be carrying on. This is part two. We're gonna be taking our rope styled brush that we created in the last video, and we're going to learn how to apply that to some lettering. So we're gonna create some cool rope styled text in this tutorial. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna to jump to the screen now, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Right, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator. This is where we left off at the end of the last tutorial we created our rope brush, and you can see it up here in the brushes panel. We've got the rope brush down there. So if you haven't watched part one, I definitely recommend it. I'll link it up on a card at the top of the screen. I think it's I think it's this side, cards pop up, or maybe this side, I forget. But it's gonna be on a card somewhere at the top of the screen. Watch part one first, it's okay. I'll wait for you, come back, and then we can carry on with this one. Right here, so first of all, now I've got my brush, I can just delete everything. I don't need any of this anymore. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab the text tool and type some text. Now you can do this with your own lettering. You can draw your own lettering with the pen tool or the brush tool and do it that way. But I'm gonna start with an existing font. So let's just click and I'm gonna type the word rope. And I definitely need to make this a lot bigger. So we'll hold shift and scale this up, make it much bigger. And from the property inspector on the right, I'm gonna pick a font. This font is or author. Uther? I, I don't know how you say that. Uther? Author? That's one of those. But that is the font I'm using. I'll try and find a link and pop it in the description if you'd like to download and follow along with this particular font. It's a pretty nice font and we'll scale this up a little bit more. Now before we go any further we do need to convert this to outline so we can't keep this as an editable font unfortunately. So we'll go up to type down to create outlines and you'll see if I jump into outline mode, this is now just a path like any other shape in Illustrator. So what we can do now is if I select this, go up to the brushes panel and we can click on our rope brush and we can see we get, uh, well, that this absolute mess. So if we just turn off our fill, so we leave our black stroke on. Now the reason it looks like this is because it's just way too big at the moment. Everything's just intersecting with each other and it looks awful. So if you go over to the stroke panel over here on the right, and as you gradually start to bring this value down, you can see it looks a bit more acceptable. So we'll go with 0.2. Now it depends entirely on the size that you created your brush at the beginning. So we'll go with something like 0.2, maybe 0.1, that's a little bit thin. Okay, 0 0.2, we'll stick with that, that's good. And well, it's done a pretty good job considering it's like a custom path and it can be quite complex, but we've got lots of random artifacts and things. So if we jump back into outline mode, remember that's Command or Control Y on the keyboard. You can see we have all these random pieces that we can't actually get to. So if I just zoom in as well, you can see here that in outline mode, the paths, well, they're not all very smooth. They're quite jaggedy especially here as well. This is like a semicircle, very jagged. This jaggedness really will cause a lot of problems with our custom brush. In fact, you can see on this piece, we have lots and lots of jaggy bits, and that is due to just terrible paths. So it depends on the font you're using, um, but this one uh, isn't totally smooth when I've converted it to outlines, so that's causing problems, but we can fix that quite easily. So if I select it, go up to Object, down to Path, and select Simplify. And we get this little window pop up here. And I've just checked Preview. And what I can do is adjust the curve precision. So as I adjust this, it does adjust the curve precision. Now I like to go with somewhere between 90% and 100%. Now if I turn Preview on and off, watch this, you're gonna see a huge difference. So you see all those little broken paths and everything? All of a sudden, they correct themselves for the most part. So if I go back over here and zoom in, so just undo and redo. So you can see there, not all of them, 
but a lot of them, particularly along this line round here, it just removes a lot of those jagged bits and just simplifies a lot of things. So we could go and do this again. Path, simplify, there we go. And maybe we'll try this with a slightly lower percentage. So we'll go for 90. And if I jump back into outline mode, you can see, well, we've gone from having this many anchor points to this many anchor points. So that's why I say sometimes between 90 and 100%, 100 can look quite good and give you quite a nice effect, but dropping it down to 90 or a little bit below that will drastically reduce the number of anchor points in your design. And the more anchor points we have and the more kind of jagged angles, the more problems we're gonna get. So you can see we have this, it's not quite perfect. So what we can do is go back into outline mode. Now, this custom brush in this particular instance seems to struggle when corners aren't like rounded off or anything. So if I select this piece here and delete that, what I'm gonna do is just create my own. I'm just gonna create my own path. So hold alter option on the keyboard and click on this anchor point drag up, drag this round, something like this. And I can use the direct selection tool to go and kind of edit these if I want to. This is just one way of doing it. So if I come back out of outline mode, you can see it looks like this. We've still got that kind of hard edge, so we need to round that off. Now, another way of doing this, which I find more effective personally, is to just grab the smooth tool. This is under the shaper tool or the pencil tool. So left click and hold, grab the smooth tool and you can just click and drag over corners and just keep going until it smooths it out. And then you can grab the direct selection tool again. Just move some of these around. So essentially what we're trying to do is use the smooth tool, the direct selection tool and the pen tool to simplify a lot of these shapes. So if I just go back in here, maybe remove a couple more of these and then just do something that's a little bit smoother. So something like this. So you can see it takes a little bit of trial and error, but the smoother you can make your paths, the fewer issues you're gonna have. So let's select this again, grab the smooth tool, just go over, there you go. So you can see, this does take a little bit of time. It depends entirely on your font as to how difficult or how simple this is. This is one way to do it with an existing font. And as I say, depending on the font you use, it might be easy, it might be more complicated. I picked this example because it is much more complicated. But we could go through, in fact, if I just jump back a little bit, so edit, undo a bunch of times take us back to when it was super complicated like this. What I can actually do is just use the smooth tool and smooth all of this in one go. So you can see there, that's another way of doing it. Look at the difference from that to that. So pen tool, direct selection tool, smooth tool, those are the ones that you're gonna use if you want to kind of try and refine and correct your path. So I'm doing this as an outline with an existing font. This is pretty cool, right? We could carry on and do this and smooth everything out until it looks fantastic. Something else we could do is we could actually have just one single line for our rope lettering. So rather than having an outline, just have the fill of the lettering as the rope effect. So we'll just get rid of all this. And we'll type our text again, rope. It remembers the font, scale it up holding shift. And what I'm gonna do is go to Object Lock Selection, just so I don't select it by mistake, grab the pen tool, and then pick a different color. So we'll just go with purple for now. Set that as my stroke color. You can see here, you can see how jagged parts of this font can be. And another way to do this is to just draw the letters manually. So we just have a single stroke. Now, because we know that corners and angles do tend to cause problems, what we can do is just make sure that we have as few curves like that in our design as possible. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is very curvy. Sorry, make sure we have as few straight lines or corners, hard edges as possible. So we want lots and lots of curves and fewer straight lines. So it wants to continue this path here. Go to select and deselect or press escape on the keyboard and it stops that from continuing. For this next one, I can use the ellipse tool. There we go, nice and easy, much quicker. We've got the P here as well. So rather than going up, 
and having that like hard edge at the top there, what I'm going to do is just make sure I try and keep this as rounded as possible. And because I'm creating all of this lettering from scratch as well, I'm in control of how simple these paths are. So when you kind of use an existing font, it auto generates a lot of those paths. They have lots and lots of pieces. It can cause problems, but here I'm just using only the anchor points and the paths that I need. So I'm not just creating like an excess amount. Okay, so there we go. We've created some lettering. It's okay. Remember, we can of course zoom in, grab that direct selection tool and just bend this round or use the smooth tool to just manually tweak our paths. I think I actually made that worse there. So I'm going to smooth it out. There we go. Perfect. So we have our rope lettering. Now I need to go to object, unlock all, and I can just get rid of the black text. Now I don't need that anymore. I've got my, my path here. And what I'm going to do is select this, go to the brushes panel, select the brush. You can see it looks like a horrible, complicated mess, but we just need to drop down the stroke a little bit. We'll go for something like this, 0 0.25. Looks pretty good. And what I can do now is use the direct selection tool to just refine any problem areas or just refine how this path connects in real time. So you can see I've just selected this end anchor point here and I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this into the exact position I want it. Now if it's not perfect, don't worry, you can go and edit it later on. But you can see when we create it ourselves, it's just so much, so much simpler, so much less complicated. So we'll just go around here. We've got this one little problem area here that seems to be causing a bit of an issue. So direct selection tool, we tried that. We'll try and smooth it out. And I can always come back to that or kind of fill that in by drawing another path on top of it at the end. But we'll leave that there for now. I don't want to spend too long on this. So what we're going to need is where you can see here where the letters end, we have no cap. Now this looks pretty good, but we need to add the cap to the end of these letters. So if we just grab the pen tool, Left click, hold shift, draw a line, and then create the same brush tool. I think we did 0 0.25 on the width. There we go. Just make that a little bit shorter. What I need to do is just isolate this middle bit. So we'll go to object, expand appearance. And then what I need to do is just go into outline mode with the direct selection tool and just delete some of these anchor points. Maybe delete this entire left half by dragging over it. Delete or backspace on the keyboard. And then using the pen tool to just connect up some of these anchor points. Something like this. You can of course spend a lot longer and take more time and more care with yours. So I've created this like end segment now. And what I can do is just, I'll keep this as a template. Just hold alter option and drag to make a copy. And I can now use this to kind of add caps to all of the ends. So you can see here, and because we set this up in part one perfectly, this will line up exactly. So again, zoom in thousands of percent, line it all up, and there we go. So now we've got to do this over here. Rotate this round. The shortcut for the rotate tool is R on the keyboard. So you can just rotate that, get it into position. I'm gonna do this really, really quickly. So let's just do that. You're of course definitely gonna take more time, aren't you? Promise me you'll take more time with yours. So we're gonna another, do another one here. Alter option, drag. Position this like so. We've got the P here, so we could bring this in. So it actually connects with the other letters. There we go, solve that problem. And we're just gonna have one more for the E. And we're just gonna drag this around. Use that rotate tool, remember, and just position it like so. Zoom in nice and close, get it all lining up so everything is perfect. If it won't snap or it's giving you any problems, just zoom in even more. Don't worry about little issues like this. We zoomed in very far and we can always correct that with the direct selection tool at the end. So if we zoom back out now, I'll put this little piece over here. We've created essentially our rope lettering. I personally prefer this to the kind of the first version we did, but what we're going to do next is drag over all of this. When you're happy with your paths and everything, just go up to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, Expand, 
Oh, we don't need to expand, all done, all good. Now we can see the paths here. They are quite complicated, so we just need to connect everything together. So we'll drag over it, and from the Pathfinder panel, select the top left option, Unite. And that just unites everything into one shape. Now sometimes you do get these random problem areas here that you can just select with the direct selection tool, go in and just manually remove some of these. This is just one of the things that can happen when you have a very complicated custom path, you get these little artifacts, just go in with the direct selection tool, just remove them. It takes a little bit of time, but you might get them, you might not, but if you do, that's how you do it. It's just finding them with the direct selection tool and just removing them from your design. It just keeps it a bit cleaner. Okay, so we just got one little issue to fix here. So we could just go and draw a custom path. So it seems to be snapping to that. So I'm just gonna manually try and draw a shape here. So I'm just using the pen tool to fix this. There we go, something like this. And you can of course spend a lot longer. So just draw custom shapes to kind of fill in any bits that have gone a bit, a bit weird. So we've got this bit here. I can always just make that a little bit thicker for now. And just fill that one in. And then what I need to do is just select everything with this new piece I've created and just unite that in the Pathfinder panel. And you can see there, it just becomes part of the shape. So you can kind of do that on a case by case basis for any of these. I think, was there an issue over here? Something not quite lining up. So what I can do here on this one, let's use the pen tool and I can just draw a path here, fill that with white if you want to. And you can see how it looks, looks great. Once you know how it looks, again, just select everything with this little white bit, go to the Pathfinder panel and just use subtract and it does that, which isn't what we want. It removes the entire thing. So <laughs> let's undo that and figure out what's causing the problem. So what I can do actually, another way of getting around that is select everything and use the Shape Builder tool. And I can hold Alt or Option on the keyboard. You can see it becomes a minus symbol. Click and drag and it just removes it. So the Pathfinder panel is incredibly useful sometimes, but other times the Shape Builder tool um, it's just much easier. You can just remove little pieces like that so easily. Okay, and if we zoom back out, for the most part, I could just go through and tidy up those random anchor points, but we have our text. I'm just gonna go object. Nope, everything is grouped together. So we have our text. We just need to go and apply our color. We have our same blue, our nautical color there and we've created some rope text in Illustrator. So there we go, that's how to create a rope lettering effect in Illustrator. This one was quite complicated actually, and depending on the pattern brush that you do create, it might be more or less complicated, it depends entirely on what you create. But I think this is a really good example because a lot of the issues that I encountered here, these are things that happen in the real world, even to me all the time, and it's really, really good to know how to problem solve in illustrating. Just get around these little unexpected things that tend to happen. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please do let me know down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.